Welcome to another episode of Founders Club. Today we're going to be talking to Larry Kasanov, who is one of the top movie producers in Hollywood. He's been involved in the production of films like Dirty Dancing, Platoon, and Terminator 2, including all three Mortal Kombat movies. And he's also the best-selling author of the business book, A Touch of the Madness. We're going to be talking about how you can unlock your creativity in business to take your business to the next level. We'll also break down his framework for massive business success, and he's going to share some great tips with us on raising private money as he has raised over a billion dollars over the course of his career. If you have any questions, make sure you put them in the box down below. Make sure you also get on our free Facebook group and our email list so you can stay in the loop for upcoming trainings and events. Links for those in the description. And as always, if you like money and you like real estate, like and subscribe because this is the show for you. We'll see you on the inside. Welcome to Founders Club, the show for real estate entrepreneurs. All right. Well, I'm very excited today to have Larry Kasanoff on the show with us. Um, we were actually have a mutual friend that connected us, Greg Reed. So I got to give Greg Reed a shout out. Thanks, on that. Greg. Um, well, thank you. Just oh, thanks for coming down. My pleasure. It's fine. So uh, a little bit different of an episode today <laughs> because we've got a, a legendary movie producer in the house. You've been involved in some of the top movies from, uh, I think I said Platoon, mm -hmm. True Lies, the Mortal Kombat series, all those things. Um, so maybe we can just kind of start there. Sure. And then in addition to that, you've written a book and uh, kind of on how creativity applies to business. And I think that's going to be the crossover on, on where we can have a really great conversation. Great. So uh, just to take it back to the beginning, why don't you give us like the quick overview on, on your history? So I wanted to be a movie produ producer since I was a little kid. And I got very, very lucky, and right out of grad school, I got a great job. This is in the mid-'80s um, as head of production and acquisitions for a company called Vestron, which at the time was riding the boom of the home video business. So in the 80s, the home video business was to the world what streaming is to the world today, a new business that needed product. Okay. And my job was to deliver 80 movies a year to the company, 80, 80. Buy them, make them, co-produce them, invest in them, don't lose money. That was it. <laughs> So and they were low-budget movies, so we mostly made low-budget uh, action movies and rom-coms and horror movies and things like that. And along came a script called Platoon, mm -hmm. and Platoon was very different. Platoon, if you have, don't know it, was a very, or is, but the script was a very uh, harsh, critical, sad look at the Vietnam War. And, yeah, and it was, very raw. Very raw, yeah. and the effect on kids were in it. And I wanted to make it. And my boss said, you're crazy. It's not what we do. We, we do. And then there was no, they, people weren't famous. They became famous, but they weren't famous at the time, which was a big thing of ours. And so, but I fought and he said, listen, you're the head of production. You can do it if you want, but you got to bet your job. Ooh. And I thought, oh my way. And I said, well, I didn't get into the movie business to play it safe. So I greenlit Platoon. When I saw the movie some months later, when they, the guy showed it to me, I'm the only person in the world to giggle his way through the first screening of Platoon. Not because it's bad, because it was so good. I was like, oh, I'm not getting fired. I'm not getting fired. <laughs> and in I fact, keep my job. I, I gotta keep my job. It was so good, it won Best Picture that year. And a few months later, at the Academy Awards, and a few months wow. later, I ran into the, the director at a bar in New York, and he bought me a drink, and he said, you know, kid, I always liked you. You have a touch of the madness. And I thought, a touch of the madness? So, is he calling me crazy? Am I crazy? <laughs> And then I thought, well, my boss was kind of crazy by giving a 25-year-old kid that kind of responsibility. The director was kind of crazy or had a touch of the madness by insisting on making a Vietnam movie in a way no one ever had. Mm -hmm. And I was certainly a little crazy by bidding my job on it. And it was the greatest job in the world at 25 years old. So, so right then it occurred to me, that's it. That's the phrase. That's the touchstone. Innovation demands a touch of the madness. Mm. Creativity demands a touch of the madness. We, platoon wouldn't exist if it weren't for a touch of the madness. Mm. And so then I thought, well, why is, why is that important? Because the river of life will always pull you towards the middle. Everybody. And it, that's okay if you don't mind, but you'll never be great. Because mm. the audience wants the new and the different. And so if you want to swim away from that current, you need innovation and creativity. And if you, and if to get the innovation and creativity, you need a touch of the madness. So that became my touchstone for my whole life and my whole career. And I've been very fortunate and made a lot of, you know, movies that have done pretty well and continued to make movies. But recently, 
I started realizing, boy, people are more scared than I've ever seen to take that creative chance. You're not. You, you the second I walked in here, look, can we, we say, say this? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean you've sure. got an art studio. You're, I mean, clearly you have a touch of the madness. You, you've tied into your creative side. Most people in your position would say, oh, I can't do that. What will people think? That's what I was encouraging people to do. So that's why I wrote the book. Mm. And it's called A Touch of the Madness. Touch of the Magic. On that Mad note, Madness, not magic. Mad ma ma madness, touch of the Madness. Pardon me. Um, and on that note, it is available now. So mm, available everywhere books are sold. Yeah. A so Touch of the Madness. Yeah, Touch of Madness. Um, one thing you said in the book is massive success requires taking big risks. Embrace the most creative, unique, and boldest part of you with a touch of the ma touch of madness. The madness. The madness. Right. Talk to me about that. Well, again, you, you, in, in order to do something great, nothing great happens without taking a chance. Mm -hmm. And that current of the river of life will always pull you towards the middle. And if you don't fight it, and fighting it, I believe the best way to fight it is to give in to your crazy. People always tell you, no, 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 don't try that crazy thing. Don't be that nuts. Listen to, no, don't listen. Mm -hmm. Listen less, I think you should, people. Do what's in your heart. That idea that your wife, your husband, your mother, your father, your kids, your parents will kill you for, but you're the one that you can't stop thinking about, that's the one. Mm. Do it, what do you get to lose? Mm. And one of the ways, you know, I, I, I say there's three ways to do it, we call it create, ask, play, you have to create your great idea, mm -hmm. ask anybody anything, or, um, and, and then you gotta have fun. You gotta do it all with a sense of fun. But if you think about ask anybody anything, Ask, 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 ask. You just gotta be, you, it, a touch of the madness isn't only the idea, it's then when you have the idea, what do you do with it? So in the middle of the pandemic, we decided to make an animated movie and we wanted Cher, world famous Cher, to play bobblehead Cher, you know, bobblehead. And we wanted to use her likeness and her name. And everyone said, you know, it's crazy, Cher will never do it, she's never done an animated movie. But we asked, 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 and we got her and she was great. Mm. When the movie came out, People Magazine said, to share, you've never done an animated movie. Why did you do this one? And she said, I've never done an animated movie because no one ever asked me before. I did. So if you can imagine that Cher, one of the most iconic people on earth, has never been asked to do an animated movie until we came along, in your life, what are you not doing? Because you're thinking, oh, I can't do that. The person, uh, they must be asked 100 times a day. Maybe they've never been asked. Mm. Try it. Mm. Go for it. I love that. Um, yeah, I really like that. I, I, I do think that that kind of unlocks a lot of potential for people. But um, what about the people that, because I can already hear it. I, I I'm not creative. I don't I don't think like that. What what do you say to those types of people? Well, I think everyone. Look, nothing is nothing is for everyone. And again, if someone wants to sort of ride professionally, person in kind of a middle space, that's okay. I mean, there's nothing. You know, you can just sort of have your a good job and be an accountant and have and then nothing don't ruffle the feathers and that that's fine mm. this is if you want to be great if you want to be different if you want to really make a mark because as i said the audience your customers they want something different but but just because i'm using examples of a per se creative industry every industry is creative industry right totally I mean, agree i mean you know in real estate the way people market a building build a building develop a building sell a building i mean all, all kinds of things that, that happen to do it that's mm -hmm. that's creative mm -hmm. it's just you don't have to, creative doesn't necessarily mean taking pictures and writing scripts. It can mean anything. 100%. And by the way, I think deep down, most people are creative. I think they have a fear which prevents them from being creative, mm. but I think they are. And yeah. why not try it in your job? For example, you might just want to be creative by saying to your, your staff, let's do something fun. I mean, during the, during, well, COVID's a little harder example, but, but, in post COVID, when people are only working a few days a week in the office, I mean, take your staff roller skating. Try, I mean, why? You know, if you do something with a sense of play, mm, right? You have a better idea, and and you respond better. You you can instill that in your group, without you know writing a Shakespeare play. You yeah. can just so creative doesn't just mean artsy creative. It means being creative in the way you approach your business. Yeah, it could be as simple as you know being creative on how to. Uh, get the highest and best use out of a piece of real estate. It could be creative on new and different, exciting ways to market your business. Uh, it could be, uh, there's limitless ways. The, the guys who, who thought up, um, you know, the shared workspaces, no one ever thought of that before. Right. Now it's, all great ideas seem obvious in hindsight. Mm -hmm. Someone had to be creative to do that. Yep. 
ways. There's yeah. a million ways to do yeah. it. Yeah, and creativity in terms of like putting deals together, terms, yeah. uh, all that kind of creativity. I think real estate is, is, I've studied it a lot. I think it's an incredibly creative space. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, all of a sudden you, you find all over the world, I don't know how many years ago this started, all these abandoned buildings next to an old riverfront now became these riverfront lofts right. that became incredibly expensive, right. whereas before they were, you know, in, I don't know the dates, but they were run down buildings. Yeah. Oh, I think a, it's really creative. It was an old fish house or something. Yeah, yeah. It now into, becomes the fish house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, cool, so I wanna, I wanna circle back to the create, ask, play framework and maybe we can break that down a little bit more. So the first thing you have to do if you follow my advice and have a touch of the madness is you have you to create your idea. And the basic point about creating your idea is you have to first understand the essence of your idea. What, what, why is it a good one? What are you really doing with this? So when I decided to make Mortal Kombat into a movie, no video game had been made into a successful movie. Everyone said it couldn't be done. They said your career's over, it happens to be a lot, and you're crazy. <laughs> but you know what? I didn't think I was making Mortal Kombat, the video game, into a movie. I thought I was making the essence of Mortal Kombat into a movie. So picture picture an intellectual property or an idea, anything is a pyramid. And you think the top, in the case of Mortal Kombat, is the video game. No, that's one rung down. The top is the essence of what made it a successful video game. I believe it's empowerment. Martial arts teaches you that you don't have to be the biggest on the block to win if you study hard and do the right thing. I believe that's what it is. When I was deciding whether or not to do it, I was wandering around an arcade, that's where they used to have machines that you put in quarters to play yeah. games, in, um, in, in LA, and a little kid slapped a quarter down on the Mortal Kombat machine, he was 11 years old, and looked up to me and said, I challenge you to Mortal Kombat. <laughs> and then he beat the hell out of me. And if you know the game, it makes you feel great when you win. So yeah. zero win, fatality. You, you fatality. You. <laughs> and the kid left feeling like a million bucks. He could beat this adult, he had power, he had control. That's empowerment, of course, it's in a fun package and I decided then and there to do it. So once you realize it's empowerment, then you think, okay, it's already been spread into a video game, I'll go back to that and I'll spread it into a movie and into an animated series and a live action series, all these things that, that, that we've done. Mm -hmm. So first understand the essence of it and then, you gotta hold on with a zeal that is a bit crazy, because everyone will tell you it's you're, you're crazy and mm -hmm. it's a terrible idea. When we did Dirty Dancing, it was not thought to be, a, again, a great idea. The movie had already been started and stopped by another studio, we bought it from them, and it wasn't going great, and the guys who own the company I work for managed to lure a musical and producing legend named Jimmy Einer, who was in the area, to come and help, and Jimmy, brought in another musical producing legend named um, Michael Lloyd. So those two guys got in charge of Dirty Dancing. And once they got in charge of it, they started looking at it. And they found the song, Time of My Life, had already been recorded, but as a high falsetto disco song. Okay. They said, well, no, 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 we gotta change that. So they changed it, they, they brought in a new singer, they made it a lower, slower ballad, and they sent it out to everybody, the, the, the managers, the director, the record company, and so forth, and no one liked it. They all, they all hated it. They all thought, this is terrible, you gotta make this change, you gotta make that change. Jimmy and Michael were very accommodating. They said, sure, no problem. We hear you, we'll make the changes. Three weeks later, Jimmy and Michael send out version two. And they say, here's version two. And by the way, we sent it to some radio stations. In those days, radio stations helped you promote your albums. And they really like it. The notes came back incredibly positive. Thank you so much. The changes were great. We really appreciate it. This is fantastic. This is wonderful. So the question is, what brilliant thing did they do between version one and version two musically to make everyone happy. And you know what they changed? Mm. Nothing. They didn't change a note, they didn't change anything. All they did was change the label from version one to version two. But because, and they doubled down, they sent it to radio stations. If the radio stations hadn't liked it, they would have been in real trouble because that's already public. They knew the value of their idea. That is how you approach your creativity and your idea with a touch wow. of the madness. You yeah. figure out the essence and you never, ever, ever let go. Mm. The second thing is ask, which I just I talked like about. That. You gotta ask That's like burning the boats, basically. It, it, absolutely, yeah. and you because everyone's gonna tell you that river, that current is gonna pull you towards the middle. You can't do it, it's terrible. People tell me that all the time. They told me that yesterday. I mean, right. I get it, I right. constantly get it. And so then you've got to ask, 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 ask. I mean, we're, we're, we're asking the Pope to do something. He, he keeps saying no in these lovely past letters, but we keep trying. Mm. And, I, and I think the third thing is a state of play. You have to try and operate in a state of play. That doesn't mean you don't take it seriously, but that means you take it playfully and you try and enjoy it. You'll be in a good, a good frame of mind. I, I, um, 
we were making the first Mortal Kombat movie. Part of the movie was shot in these beautiful islands in southern Thailand. And we needed a boat to get what's called B-roll, which is just um, establishing shots of, 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 the, of the area. But none of the local fishermen's boats were big enough. They were too shaky to support a camera. And, but there's a gorgeous resort near there named the Amanpuri, and they have a yacht. And so I thought, really? <laughs> And so I, as the producer, felt I had to supervise that shoot. And so for three days, we cruised around the island shooting stuff. Now, you can look at that two ways. What am I doing? This is wrong. This is crazy. How can I be doing this and work? But it was in the budget. It was a great shoot. And we had a blast. Mm -hmm. And I would say that we got better stuff because the crew was so happy. Mm -hmm. We did nothing wrong. It's nothing, you know, we didn't do it, pull any boondoggles or anything. That's what we were supposed to do. It was a, but why not? cruise around the islands for three days on a yacht, getting everything you need to get, right? <laughs> right? I mean, if you live your life that way, you'll just do better. You'll, you'll have more, studies show you're more open to what new ideas when you're in a fun state or a state of play. So enjoy it a little bit, play it all like a game. I love that, that's great advice. Uh, I wanna unpack a little further on the, so the ask, when you say ask, is that basically just like making the contacts, like literally asking? <laughs> yeah, like ask, like, like, like like what, like what we did with Cher. I, I, I mean, you just gotta ask anybody for, cause when, for what you want, because once you have an idea, you know, there's all the kinds of stories about real estate where you hear that people said, well, I, I wanted that place, it wasn't for sale, so I went up and I rang the doorbell and I said, hi, can I buy your whatever? Right. And they just kept doing it and eventually, you know, the, they, got the they, yes. they got the thing. Yeah. So why not? But people often won't do that. They won't call, they won't ask. Mm. I like, you know, I always ask people, if you could call anybody in the world right now who's alive and ask them one question, who would you call and what would you ask them? Mm. Most people don't have an answer. And the reason they don't have an answer is because they haven't thought of it because they don't think they can do it. Mm. But the reality is, sure you can. And if they don't answer you or they say no, so what? You know, I started doing this in college and then you had to literally either call them or go see them. There's no <laughs> other option. Right. Now, you can send an email, you can send a text, you can send a DM. There's a million ways to get to somebody. Mm -hmm. But why not? Because in, in pursuit of your idea, like I need a chair for my movie or a yacht for my other movie or, or whatever, you can ask lots of people. And, and it's, well, I can't call the chairman of so-and-so and ask them, why not? Mm. What are they gonna do? Right. Say no? Yeah. So what? Yeah. I'm telling you, like I said, people say no to me all the time. They still say no to me all the time. I think, I'm astonished, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, but they do, so what? Yeah, so that's really, really, really important. And most people won't do it. They just don't want to do it. I work with some people, you know, in, in, other, in partners in various projects, very accomplished guys or, or women, very, they, I, they just, they won't make the phone call. Mm -hmm. And they, with three months, they're like, well, we're going to call Frank tomorrow, and they never do it. I think what stops a lot of people is just the rejection. They don't want to deal with the rejection. So what do you say to that? I mean, I, well, what's going to happen? And so what I say to that is start small. When I ask that question, okay, so let's say your real ask is you want to call, you know, the chairman of some huge real estate company and ask them some question. Maybe there's a smaller ask. Maybe you always wanted to call the guy down at the bike shop and ask him why your bike is uncomfortable. Or maybe you always <laughs> wanted to call your father-in-law and ask him why he never mm. likes to go golfing with you. I mean, you know, start small. But I think you have to kind of, <laughs> I don't even hear the word no. No is just the beginning. So what? People say no all the time. I mean, I, I just, Big deal, yeah. and you got to get used to it. It's like a muscle you exercise. You know, if you I do a lot of martial arts, if you box or something, initially you certainly don't want to get hit, but you know, it's just part. Or, or if yeah. you're a football player, you don't want to get tackled, or whatever. Or if you're a golfer, you don't want to miss the putt. But you know, you pretty much survive. Yeah. <laughs> so right. You just get used to it. I think that's true. I think a you got to get used to it. B, you just got to swallow the pill because that's what every successful person since the beginning of time has done. The more contacts you make, the more success you will find. You know, look, look at if, if you're a baseball player and you hit over 300, you're like a superstar. Right. That still means you're missing seven out of 10. Right. If you're the best boxer in the world and you're 50 and 0 like Floyd Mayweather, in each round, you still get hit yep. a ton of times mm -hmm. when you win. So that's how you have to look at it. I'll take the hit, but ultimately by doing it, I'm going to win. It gets me to my end result. Yeah, because you're end yeah. result. All yeah. you care about is the end result. Totally agree. And I also agree with uh, what you said about it's it's a muscle. Yeah. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it. The first time you go for a jog, you're not running a marathon. Right. 
you're going to maybe run around the block and you'll be gassed out and you'll be winded. Maybe that first couple times you're doing the, the calls, you're going to, you know, you're going to not know what to say. You're going to fumble your words. But then the more you do it, the better you get. I think, I think too. social media, on the one hand, makes life, it's really, as I said, easy. You can just DM somebody. Mm -hmm. But it's also so easy we get a little lazy about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, or people don't answer people. You know, the notion of putting yourself out there and, and if you can, making the phone call, asking people, mm -hmm. again, even start small, I would suggest it. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when I first started doing martial arts, I had this great trainer, like Rocky's trainer. And when we would spar, I mean, I spar, I mean, he'd kill me. I mean, but, <laughs> but you know, if he would hit me, I'd, I'd put my, i go, oh, and I'd stop for a second and go, I can't believe you. And then hit me again. He goes, no, he just, <laughs> he, it's the next one. You just go on. So you don't even think about it. That second is gone. Mm -hmm. So I call up somebody, I ask them something, they say, no, it's done. I call the next guy. Yeah. Yeah. Totally you know, agree. it's a, again, it's a game. You got to yeah. play the game. Yeah. And make it fun, right? And like make back it fun. to make Have it fun. Have a good time. We used to, uh, well, we, me and my business partner, when we first started the business, we would just sit in a room and call. Right. And we would just make a game of it. <laughs> and we had uh, little poker chips on our desk, and they would stack five poker chips each. And it was like, okay, we, we you know, who can get the first five yeses or who can set the first five appointments? And That's we, great. You know, loser buys dinner. That's exactly like the way that. to go. Yeah. That's great. And you had fun. And had because fun. you had fun, you, the other person on the other end of the phone sensed your confidence, right. and that makes it better. And it makes the the rejection a lot easier too, because it was like, I don't care. I'm just I'm trying to get these five chips to move from this side of the table right. to this side of the table. You say no, I'm moving on to the next right. one. That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I like the idea of incorporating play as well, and 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 being creative and all that. But uh, where does it? Is there a point where it can go too far? Can we be having too much fun and being too creative uh, versus like business acumen and, and staying focused and not chasing shiny red objects. <laughs> I devote a big chapter in the book to, I call it a touch of the madness, not a ton of the madness. Okay. And when, when have you gone, when is it a little too far? Got it. A lot of that is a personal decision, which mm -hmm. some people might think of as a little too crazy, a lot of crazy is, is whoever you are. Sure you can, but you only know by following your instinct and following your gut and, and trying and thinking, did I go too far in this one? Did, did, did I, um, y y you know, so here's a, a story that one of the first movies I ever got on when I started that, that first job had already been ordered by the company before I started. This was already starting pre-production. And it was sort of like a low budget Game of Thrones. I've been really low budget, way before <laughs> Game of Thrones. And the guy who ran the company was a funny guy and he said to me and my staff, we we're still in LA and the producers had gone on to Italy to start the movie. He said, and I want, and I want, you know, fighting and sex and violence and, and you name it and, and, and sword and sorcery and, and, and snakes and wizards. And we all thought, he was kidding, but we thought <laughs> snakes and wizards were funny. That became our cry, like our little battle cry, our, like your chips. And when my staff and I, before I went to Italy, would talk to the producers in Italy, every, we'd end every conversation with, and remember, snakes and wizards. It's just a joke. So I get to the set. I've never been on a set before. It's going well. I'm in Italy. They're all so relaxed. I'm like, this is a set. I mean, they would have wine at lunch. And they tell me they have a surprise for me. And one day, and, they, and they're very excited. And then, they, you know, they, they take me outside right after lunch. And we're all in a semicircle. And I'm looking over the hills of Rome in the distance. I don't see anything. And then I see a little dot. And the dot seems to be growing and getting bigger. And I realize there's a truck coming down the hills. And as the truck gets closer, they all form a semicircle around me. And there's a band playing. I don't know where they got a band. And they're bursting with pride. And the truck backs up. And it's a very colorful truck, like your paintings. And outbursts a bunch of women snake charmers with boa constrictors and Burmese pythons around their neck. And people dressed beautifully as wizards. <laughs> and they all applauded. And they got the snakes and wizards. And then I realized it was a joke. We forgot to tell them we were kidding. <laughs> yeah. So what do I do? They're all surrounding me. They're applauding. Clearly, they've gone to they great got trouble. The snakes and the wizards. And <laughs> at our expense. Not in a state of play. I could have freaked out. I could have yelled at them. I could have said we're going over budget. In a state of play with a glass of wine in my hand, sitting in Rome, I thought, put them in the movie. And we put them all in the movie. <laughs> and you know what? There were no snakes. They weren't in the script. Yeah. I, and you know what? They look great. Now, the movie, in reality, is terrible. But it made a lot of money. I like to think the snakes and wizards helped. But <laughs> <laughs> that's what you do in a state of play. So is that too far? Mm. Well, we should have been more careful by <laughs> saying to them, it's a joke, snakes and wizards. 
but it worked. So I guess it's not too far. Mm. So you, you have to take that shot and think to yourself, what is or what isn't? Um, what is too far and what isn't too far? And, and, and so you, but you certainly can go too far, but you know, look, I, if I have a glass of wine at night, that, I'm good. I know guys who can drink four glasses of wine in their right. It just depends right. your tolerance. But you don't know until you try. Mm. That's what I encourage people to do. I say, get out there, try it. Take a shot. Go do something. Yeah. So what if, what if your first idea wasn't working? What if you happen to be great at painting? What if you weren't? So maybe you would then start building violins. I mean, yeah. you, you find it. Right. Yeah, yeah. But you won't find it if you don't try. Love that. That's great advice. And find your fun zone. Everyone's fun zone. Everyone's is a bit fun different. zone. Everyone's fun zone is different. Yeah. yeah. You know, you just gotta you just gotta play it like a game. People always ask me in my movies, what would you've done in this movie? Or sometimes people like to make director's cuts and things. I always think, you know, what it's like a, it's like a football game. It's the next last Sunday's gone. Now now if we learn something, we can use it this Sunday, but it's it's over. Mm. You just gotta play it like a game. Because that's really what it is. Doesn't mean you don't take it seriously. Right. You know, the football players take their game seriously, but you got to play it like a game and just keep going onward. Love that. It's great advice. Play it like a game. Um, so I'm curious on how you would coach someone that was maybe like wanting to go from where they're at to the next level in business. Well, I would ask them to ask themselves three questions. And the questions are, what are you good at? What do you love and what can you sell yourself as? What are you good at? What do you love and what can you sell yourself as? And where those intersect, that's where you should be. Mm -hmm. Now, how close are you to that right now? And if you're very close or far away, we have to start getting you to that point. It simply means the one thing you have to do is be somewhat honest with yourself. I could tell you that, well, I tell you what I'm good at. I'm really good at basketball, but <laughs> I'm not. And I'm never going to be a professional basketball player. And so that would be just dishonest with myself as long as you're honest with yourself and and let everything else fall away and usually if you, you know what if you take three deep breaths and answer the question without thinking usually you come up with the right answer you know deep down so I'd ask, I'd ask them that question and then say okay now we have to figure out a simple a program step-by-step -step program for how to get from where you are to where those three points intersect mm. that's it that's where everyone should be and and then they'll do their best they'll love it and then it's not work i mean as i was driving down here a friend of mine wants to get into writing you know i write a lot of our scripts said you know kept asking me when do you write when do you find time and i'm like i love it yeah. if i'm writing a book or a script i, I do it because i love it it's yeah. fine time i can't wait right that's what you want to be i'm in my happy place yeah it's yeah. great i'm sure it's like you and your painting it's like that's what's fun to do so so i think that's what you have to do but that's what you have to do you have to find out like how have you gotten to over here when you when you don't so i'll give you an example in my world okay um during the pandemic a model i know named livia uh, uh, somehow went to Mexico, jumped off a roof and landed on a cactus and it went through her hand. And cactus are poisonous and she had an incorrect operation in Mexico or something. Anyway, I didn't even know this, but she wound up in a hospital in LA and she had been there for like six days when I found out she was there. She had her own room, but you know, no one would come for two reasons. One, because she's not from this country, so her family isn't here. And two, because it was COVID. So She's a pretty good friend. So I said, what do you need? And she gave me a whole list of this from my house and I need this food from the store because the food here is terrible. So I went around doing stuff. And I'm in my other life, I'm a photographer. I've shot her a lot. She's really fun. And so I thought, you know what? To cheer her up, I stopped by Victoria's Secret and I bought some lingerie. Just as a joke. I thought, wouldn't this be fun? And here's, and here's the, your shampoo from home and here's your healthy food from the food. <laughs> and here's some lingerie. We all laughed. When visiting hours were up, so most people that left the hospital, they somehow didn't kick me out, but it was time to go, and I said, do you need anything else? And she goes, yeah, I want to put on the lingerie and do a photo shoot. I'm like, her hand, she had a tube through her hand. I mean, literally, like, through her hand. First of all, I was amazed. Talk about state of play. Mm -hmm. Rather than being depressed or worried or lonely, she wanted to play. I didn't have a camera. I just had an iPhone. We did the shoot. And she posted one of the pictures. She got the best reaction she's ever got. Again, because it was so inspirational, her, her, her point of view. But her, her agency and her managers hated it. And they wanted her to take it down. You can't do this. This is wrong. And she said, I think it's something to do with you can't have fun in a hospital during COVID. And it wasn't like she went there on purpose. Right. She was just making the best out of it. Anyway, she took it down. And she was miserable for like X months. And one day she just said, you know, I was kept talking to her saying, you know, I asked her those questions. And if you love this kind of picture, you know, and she put it back up and said, you know, screw it. This is who I am. 
within three months, she got a new agent, a new manager, a ton of work, and got engaged. Mm. Just by being herself. That's what you want to do. Those three questions will find out where you are. It's like being lost on the map. And then you got to get back to where you are. And for her, it, it, it sounds simple, but it wasn't really just putting up a picture. It was saying, I'm going to be who I am. If you don't like it, you, then you know, you're know, you not right for me. Mm. I like that a lot. You yeah. Know. It goes back to the, the concept of uh, attracting the people that are like you and that you want to do business with and pushing away the people but, that aren't. Yeah, but you're going to do better if you're doing what you love and what you're good at and what you 100%. can say yourself as. You're just going to do better. Yeah. And, and that does take a little crazy because sometimes people will say, often they'll say, I say sometimes that's crazy. You can't possibly do that. Well, why not? Mm. The world has gotten, as I said, very mediocre. That current is really strong now. People are scared of being canceled, of being criticized, or being criticized online. And so they're not taking creative chances. I mean, we hear in our world, in the movie world, oh, these movies are all getting so mediocre. That's why. Because hmm. why? They're not taking the chances Because people are more and more scared than ever to be their true, unbridled, creative self. And that's why I wrote the book, to encourage people to do it in whatever business you're in or whatever aspect of your life. You'll be more innovative by being a little bit crazy. Love that. That's great advice as well. Um, another thing I know that you're you're big on or that you you, you have kind of uh, used over the years is being innovative and continuing to evolve uh, from everything from the way that you were shooting, the equipment you were using, the tools, the this, that, and the other thing. Um, and I think right now there's a big shift happening in the real estate business. The market's changing. There's new tools, all this stuff. So what can you say on just, you know, uh, continuing to innovate in your business and evolve? I'm a big fan of the intersection of entertainment and technology. I've been very fortunate to be involved in a lot of firsts. We did the first million selling uh, home video. I, I did the first movie that extensively used digital technology or morphing. I did the first hit movie from a video game. I did the first moving 3D camera shot. So I really like that stuff. And right now, everyone asks that question because of AI in the film business. So I think that technology in my business and your business is fantastic. With a but. There's always a but. If you have an idea and then technology helps you get there, fantastic. Mm -hmm. So let's say you know it's, it's the 1800s and you're sitting around and you go, I see this thing in Paris. It should be all metal rods and how am I going to find these metal rods? You make the Eiffel Tower. Right. If you happen to come across a bunch of cheap metal rods for sale and say, what do I do with these? You, you, you'll fail. So a after we made the first, it was for a Star Trek theme park, right? the first ever moving 3D camera shot because 3D cameras didn't move before then, um, a studio came to see us and said, we're going to start a 3D television network. Can you make us some content? We said, sure. What do you want? They said, we don't know. We said, who's your audience? Another question you have to ask yourself. They said, we don't know. I said, well, why are you doing it? They said, it's the hot thing. <laughs> they were gone in six months. Yeah. So don't, don't evolve. Don't be innovative because it's the hot thing because everyone's doing it. Do it because it solves an idea mm. you want solved. So here's a simple example. For, we did an experiment. For this book, I thought, you know, the book's got to touch the madness. I've never done a book before. i got to think of some innovative way to market it. And I've done a lot in music. So we made a music video, which is on, if you, if you, uh, if you search a touch of the madness music video, you'll okay. find it. And nice. so we made a music video, which has gone really well. But we did it all very quickly. And the music video talks about people throughout history. The music of the song is, you know, who were thought to be crazy but changed the world. So we, how do we get a picture of Beethoven moving in Van Gogh? Well, we decided we'd experiment with AI. Mm. It worked. Mm. It was great because we had an idea. Do you know what our AI budget was for a music video? <laughs> what? $15. Wow. <laughs> I know, it's not the greatest, yeah. but I mean, it's just a very fun, playful music video and it worked. So using technology to, to affect, go to, you know, create, ask, play, create your idea. Fantastic. To enhance what you're doing. To make your, your goal is to get your idea done. Using technology just because it exists, I think that you'll fail. It's mm. a great answer, yeah. Um, yeah, I like that a lot because it is it is a big enhancer if what you're doing, like you said with the music video, if you need Beethoven singing. Right. Good luck. Yeah, exactly. But there's technologies out there now it's that great. You, can, you can use. Yeah. Same thing in, in business. There's There's so many things you can automate now. There's... Uh, you know, 
even shooting content, making video scripts. AI can help you write scripts, can help you Great. create thumbnails, can Fantastic. help you get your message out there, improve your marketing. You know, the world always evolves. There didn't used to be, you know, cars. There didn't used to be airplanes. There didn't used to be assembly lines. It always changes. Mm -hmm. And you got to, it's, it's coming. So they're, they're all coming. But it's a question of how does it help you and your goals? And maybe it does, and maybe it doesn't. Mm -hmm. But you have to figure out how it helps you and your goals. And then if you embrace it, you'll do great with it. Love that. Awesome. Um, one thing else I wanted to talk to you about is I know that you've raised a lot of money over your career, um, over a billion dollars, I think. And uh, a lot of our listeners are, you know, doing real estate deals, raising private money, uh, different things like that. So what kind of tips can you give for effectively raising money? You know, I think it's changed. It's certainly changed in our world because it's, it's a little less organized. It used to be you know, here are the people investing in movies, here are the people investing in real estate, here are the people investing in so forth. I, I, I do theme park rides, which is sort of real estate, but sort of not real estate, and people are very confused by that. It's not on my list. So people have gotten a little more rigid. On the other hand, you find all this money floating around that you don't really know where it is or where it's from. Or, and the, 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 what we go through all the time is, are you real? I mean, you've come here and told us you have all this money from this, but do you? And I'm sure you guys go, go through mm -hmm. it too. So... I, I think also that in a world today of emails, texts, everything, people read less and less and less. So I just started raising money for a new venture. My, my, my deck, my business plan is one page long. Mm. Let's see how we work. That's how it works. But I think you have to be so crystal clear. So again, the essence of my idea is, the audience is, and here's why I'm great at doing it. And that's it. And then if people are interested, you can drill down. You can give them more. You can give them more. But and I also think you have to be so, 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 so uh, specific. We're, we're going we're gonna to do a, a movie that shoots partly in, Uz in Uzbekistan. And the locations are just stunning. Never been shot in a Western movie before. And so one finance guy, you know, doesn't care about the movie, just cares about money. He said, yeah, yeah, can we shoot instead in uh, Kazakhstan? Because I can get some money there. I'm like. They're not the same just because they end in Stan. <laughs> it's like they're completely yeah. different countries. Right. So I said, no. And the temptation is to say, sure. Like if you tell me, you know, your, your real estate development is going to have a swimming pool and I say, I want, a, I want a koi pond instead, you don't go, sure. Right. But that's the thing. So again, you got to you gotta do what Jimmy and Michael did on Time of My Life. you got to stick to that song. Mm -hmm. So be as simple as you can and stick to what you got. And if the person is wrong, they're wrong for you. There's a tendency to not let that person go because you're afraid you won't find someone else, like being in a bad relationship. But they're not real either. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I would just, you know, I, so I would call them out on it, but I'd be very, very, very specific on what you have and very simple and do not waver from it. I mean, you can, once you're making a yeah. deal, you can yes. be, uh, you, yeah. you know, but don't. Totally agree. Don't I, I, I actually really like the, simple approach up front. I think a one page deck is is much more effective for just being able to send and pique someone's interest. Cause I get, you know, real estate deals put across the desk all the time and sometimes they're sending these like 25, 30 page things and I'm like, I, I don't even have time to like flip through all this. If you could just summarize it and then if I'm interested, right, then like you said, then I can yeah. look at the 25, 30 page deck and do the due diligence and all that, but to just pique the interest and get it going. Yeah, that's exactly right. And then it, and it's okay, so let's say someone likes your idea. Why you, the person pitching it, or here's what I'm good at doing. Mm -hmm. and, and then what do I want? I'm very upfront about asking for what I want. Here's what we need, here's what we're doing, here's what it is, can you do this? You know. Back to create and ask. Yeah, create and ask. You know, I mean, it's a long story, but we, we, we once had an agent say, I have a deal in Korea for you. And he brought in an agent. And his agent was an agent slash priest. Priest. Yeah, I didn't quite understand this. Like, how he could be an agent slash priest. I didn't quite get this. He brings in a guy for the deal. We show the guy the deal. He's very simple presentation. Fantastic, fantastic. Signs the paperwork. Pictures all around. I'm flying to Korea tonight. I'll wire you the money. He lands in Korea the next morning and is arrested on the tarmac. We saw it in the news. We're like, the agent calls with the priest and no, 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 no problem. Okay. They bring in another guy. Now we're a little wary. Do we even bother? But we just say the same thing. And uh, that guy, makes, same thing, makes the deal. It's a great deal. 
goes home, no money. Two weeks later, arrested. This time, <laughs> when the two of them came in, you know, the agent, and his friend, the agent, asked priest, we're like, you got to be kidding me. He goes, no, no, just one more time. And when they brought in the third guy, we so didn't believe in this agent slash priest that we paid like no attention to the guy. And so the guy thought, oh my God, they must really not need the money. <laughs> he, he wired us the money the next day mm. and it was several million dollars. And so th that's the question of too much, too little madness, the question of what you do with, with you know, the ask and what you do with business plans. We just thought, you know what? We'll con we'll add. We just won't put a lot of effort, you know, we won't, we'll say exactly what we want. We were so blunt and so direct and so kind of like, we don't care because we don't believe it. It worked. Mm. So, you know, you have to keep asking, but you have to just ask for what you want and just cut through it, cut through it, cut through it. And, I, and, and qualify people. And if they're not right, get rid of them. And keep moving. Yeah. Yeah, on to the next. Mm. Great. Um, so a couple questions I like to wrap with. I like to ask everyone, um, what are you investing in? <laughs> Me. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm investing in um, a lot of my own companies. Okay. So like what, like movie studios or like... Uh, I believe that the future of the movie business lies in making movies for the entire world. There are, in the, w with digital technology, huge populations of people who previously couldn't really watch our movies in any way we can monetize, we can. But there's still a tendency to make an Indian version of the movie, a Mandarin version of the movie, an American version of the movie. And I think making one version that includes everyone becomes a very inclusive thing to do. I think it's very fun. And, and I think the audience likes it. So we're betting a lot on that. Mm. We have a new idea in streaming services. It's a new model. It's the creative is not, is not new, but we have a new model that we're investing in. So you know, I think when in doubt, because when I look at a lot of investments out there, I have investment managers and stuff, I, I, I have trouble calling what the hell's going on. Mm. So I just have really been the last few years saying, you know, what, well, you know, here we go again, but I've done this before in my life. I, I'm investing in me. Awesome. Yeah. And did I also hear you say something about theme parks? We make theme park rides. Really? Yeah. Okay. But we are also now pioneering a new way of doing that as well. Because mm. the business model of the movie business, the entertainment business is changing a bit. And everyone is very much... To, you know, decrying the end of the business, I think it's a huge opportunity. I think it's a huge opportunity. And so it, um, uh, there's been a political correctness in the movie business that I think people are getting sick of. So we've also bet on a bunch of movies that are very unpolitically correct. So everything we see that I, I again, like everything else, I can say, well, you know, someone should. Well, why shouldn't I be that someone? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, who, uh, who's the most high maintenance person you've ever worked with? <laughs> Since you're in Hollywood, I'm sure there's a, um, a good amount of egos and all of that. You know, uh, movie stars are great. They're, they're largely fantastic. They, they didn't get there by accident. They manage their own careers. They're lovely. They're great. They're smart. They're helpful. They're, they're wonderful. When we did uh, T2, I wanted to do a music video because it was a great way of producing a movie and Arnold Schwarzenegger didn't have to, he wasn't contractually obligated, but I asked him if he would do it and he said, sure, as long as you get the best band in the world. And I said, who's the best band who's in the world? That? Yeah. Called his brother-in-law who's in the record business, music business, and he looked at me and he said, Guns N' Roses. And I said, no problem, I didn't know Guns N' Roses. <laughs> but we got him and as soon as wow. we, we did, I mean, Arnold and his then wife threw a dinner party for the band, I mean, they were amazing. So they're great. Cool. And usually, um, you know, younger people starting out tend to be uh, great too. Sometimes you have a problem with people in the middle who are not quite young and new, but not quite made it yet, but resentful that they're neither young nor have made it. <laughs> right. That, you never heard of any of them, but that sometimes can be a, a, a difficult um, I can imagine. A difficult thing. But we're not very um, tolerant of that. So in, not in a bad way, but we're very upfront with people. Mm. And we try, again, we try and practice what we preach and make everything fun and playful and happy and creative. And if they want to do it, fantastic. But if they don't, mm. you know, there's lots of other uh, places. But we haven't had too much of that. We really haven't. We've been pretty, pretty fortunate. We have a, um, but as I said, it, it's, it's in the middle a little bit. Yeah. And I would argue that based on what I said at the beginning, that current of the river life pulls you towards the middle. In the middle, especially in, in our business, you're not going to do very well. So those people are probably you know, a little unhappy because they haven't quite worked up enough touch of the madness to get out of the middle, mm. but they know they shouldn't be in the middle. Right. 
So the issue really becomes theirs. You know, there's a, there's a great uh, Buddhist monastery near here called Deer Park, where, who I know really well, and I made a documentary on them once, and I'm going to visit them later today. Cool. And, and they will say to you, all you can do with people like that is plant the seed. You can simply say to them, look, here's how you could be way more creative and successful, or here's how you could accept what you are, but I can't change you. Just mm. you plant the seed, and when and if they're ever ready, they will. So that's, that's what we're cool. trying to plant do. the seed. Plant the I seed. Like that. Yeah, I like that. Um, I also have two young boys at home, mm. and I like to ask all the successful people that I get to talk to about how they would coach them and the next generation on how to be successful in business and life. You know, I don't have my own kids. I have nieces and nephews and stuff, um, but we know a lot of kids and. I mean, I, I, from what I see, and take this with a grain, the other stuff I just talked about, I'm pretty confident in this, I, you know, what do I know? <laughs> but I, I think there is a tendency to overcoddle kids. For sure. And I think uh, that tends to be the problem. I, I spoke at um, a school the other day, and the professor's a friend of mine, and it's a film school, and the kids are nice, but they don't know anything about film, even having been in film school for four years. And the professor said to me, what do, you, what do I think? I said, you know, you are the nicest, best professor in the world, but you're too nice to them. Because when they get out into the real world of the movie business, they have no you mm. to take care of them. Because whenever they get in a little problem on their student films, they Very call her life. and yeah. she solves it. So I, I think you gotta, you know, I, I don't believe in the, oh, it was better when we were kids. I think it's much better to be a kid now. I, I don't have that kind of nostalgia. But you know, my childhood was go outside and play, which wasn't perfect either. Mm -hmm. but. But when we were, when we were like eleven years old in the summers, my friend Richard and I, his his father had a little motorboat. We we would be little kids. We we take the motorboat out in the morning. We go fishing with knives and fishing. Or catch fish, cut them, clean them, sell them to the old ladies, on on the you know who lived near the docks. Get um, gas money and go water skiing. Mm -hmm. And it does teach you a kind of resilience. Sounds awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. But you can do that today. So that's, that's what I think. I, I mean, I think the, the advantages people have today are fantastic, and as I said, the technology is great, and I, I, I mean, I can imagine, when I was a kid, they didn't have 500 channels to watch, it's great. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think kids are coddled. Yeah, I agree. I think one of the best lines I ever heard on that was, you have to let kids play dangerously, or do dangerous things, but in a safe manner. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah, right? I think it's finding that sweet when spot. When I think of these other things we did as a kid on the boats and how we rode our bike and where we would go, and it was like, you know, yeah. it would be child abuse today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah But I think it was great. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, so one question, just to wrap up here, is in 60 seconds or less, what does it take to implement a touch of the madness? You have to create a great idea by understanding the essence of the idea. You have to know that you work for the audience and what does the audience want. You have to give them that and you have to hold on with an incredible zeal, almost a mad zeal. Then you have to ask anybody, anywhere, anything for what you want and never give up until you get it. And you have to do it all in a state of play. Love that. The end. The end. <laughs> Done. There's the playbook. Now you don't have to buy the book. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for people that do want to connect further, go deeper with you, how can they find you? Um, so you can just more? go to a touch of the okay. and you can uh, you can uh, get in touch and email us. I'm on um, Instagram and LinkedIn at Larry Kazanoff. Awesome. Um, and, and as I said, a touch of the madness is available everywhere books are sold. Everywhere. Go out, get your copy. Get your copy right away. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. And thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It was yeah, a lot of fun. Absolutely. Totally agree and uh for those at home make sure you like and subscribe and as always if you like money and you like real estate <laughs> we'll see you on the next one Bye.